r slash ask reddit what's a harsh truth that humans refuse to accept some people really shouldn't have kids or pets or guns or a driver's license most parents are at least decent when i see people saying that most parents shouldn't have kids it comes off to me like they think that only perfect or near perfect parenting is acceptable Parents are humans just like anyone else, and they will make mistakes, that doesn't make them bad parents immediately. You can be a good person your entire life, and still have a shitty life. This is probably the most depressing. Yep I knew a kid in school that grew his hair long, and got it cut to donate for cancer, he told jokes, and did things just to be good. He worked at an animal shelter, and sold things he didn't need to donate the money. One day his stepdad got mad, that he was working late, at the animal shelter, and his stepdad threw a punch, the kid defended himself, and his stepdad stabbed him in the chest, killing him quickly. The stepdad is in prison, but that will never be enough. The kid bought me an ice cream, because I was sad. So sad thinking about this. Lots of great people who wanted to better the world, and make others happy who then end up having their life cut short by some assholes. This one hits home so much. I did the entire work hard thing, got a degree, pay taxes, all for nothing. I'm now on disability, which took me 3 years to fight for, and now I'm portrayed as a leech on society. My rent alone is over half my income, another quarter spent on medication. Yet I did everything I was supposed to do, and still failed. People have said a lot of horrible things about you behind your back. No matter how kind and awesome a person you are, there will always be people who don't like you. Don't waste your time trying to recruit them. My friend, who is one of the nicest people I've met, once had a guy just plain not like him. My friend is generally a likable guy, and he felt like crap, that this guy just did not like him. So one day my friend confronts the guy, and is like look, what did I do? Why do you hate me? And the guy was like, it's because you always walk around all happy, and smiling all the time, like you're better than everyone. And my friend was like. He said that after, that he literally stopped ever giving a duck, if anyone liked him or not, because he realized it doesn't matter what you do, people will hate you for nothing. There is a relation between attractiveness and success. Well, guess I'll die then. You can make yourself more attractive than you currently are. Improve your grooming, learn to be a snappy dresser, learn some makeup techniques. It's a skill like any other. I lived in a wealthy neighborhood for a while, I was not. One of the first things I thought was my god, everyone here is beautiful, even the kids. While some of that was no doubt down to their looks increasing their earning potential, thus making them wealthy, most of it was having the money for all the things normal people can't afford. Personal trainers. Personal chefs or meal planners. The kind of makeup Sears doesn't sell. Etc. Ad nauseam. My point. Looks make you promoted more, succeed more, have more wealth. Wealth makes you look better, be thinner, smell nicer and get more promotions. HR is not there to protect you, it is in place, to protect the employer from you, or from your actions. Oh, yes. I like this one a lot. It reminds me, when I worked at Target a long time ago with two friends who were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time. On Black Friday morning, they went to our store before their shift, and bought a new flat screen. Girlfriend used her employee discount, I can't remember what pitiful amount it was, like 15% off or something, and realized boyfriend had all the money, so he used his card to pay, not thinking. Next day, they were called into HR at the end of their shift and all I saw was our asset protection escorting them out. They were fired. That was the only job I quit. Duck target. In Germany, the employers have worker units in any company bigger than a certain number of people, and they do protect you. They also actually have political power to protect the workers. My aunt had been elected as leader for 20 ish years in her company. Sounds like a union. 
there's always someone better than you at whatever you are doing. I'm a lazy balding fat ass. It's comforting to know there always be someone lazier, bolder, and fatter than I am. The correlation between competency and corporate position is not strong. My dad works as a clerk at an electronics shop. His boss is an idiot who cannot do anything, can't even lead management, and don't have any experience in electronics. Heck, his employees have to log in into his email. To add, he gets so much money per month, but his employees get the minimal wage pay. Welcome to the corporate world. Sometimes things just stop working, out of no fault of yours or his or anyone's, but just because. Some people change, and some people don't, and inevitably, some things between those changing and unchanging people will stop working. I needed to see this today. Thank you. You can explain your point without screaming at someone. On the flip side, just because someone is calm doesn't mean that what they are saying makes any sense. And on the flip flip side, just because someone is screaming doesn't mean they are wrong. Getting a job comes down to whether or not the interviewer liked you or not. I lost out on a very nice job and later found out that pretty much the sole reason I was rejected was because when the hiring team took me to lunch after my interview, I ordered a steak which I guess isn't appropriate for lunch. Pretty dumb, as someone who does a lot of interviews. Unless, Marib, everyone else ordered first and got an inexpensive sandwich and then you got a steak. And really that was the excuse they used for they just didn't really like you. Never disliked someone for something that petty. It's more like, wouldn't shut up about his weird political opinions at an interview lunch. Unless you're a famous historical figure, you will be completely forgotten within a few decades of your death. That's actually the origins of the famous saying, quiet women rarely make history, but so few seem to know that. The woman who penned it meant that there was a lot of women throughout history that did great, well needed work, but no one writes, or even thinks about them, because women's work isn't valued. A lot of women worked quietly behind the scenes of pinnacle historical moments. That most of us aren't really that special. I find that truth, to be very sobering and comforting, but it seems many would disagree. I think you'll find your mother thinks you are very special. Kindness is rarely reciprocated, but be kind anyway. And never ever give up. The world is hard and cruel, but keep doing what you have to, be smart about it, but don't let anyone deter you from being your best beautiful self. Yeah, it's rarely reciprocated but it also makes both people feel good. But yeah, rarely reciprocated. That everyone is ducked up in the head, some more than others. My mom has a friend who is a psychiatrist and she says, there are no healthy people, there are only undiagnosed. Employers don't care about you, unless they gain from you. That would be a meritocratic system. The harsh truth of corporate life is that sometimes, upper management will act like they don't notice that good employees are leaving the company because of an incompetent middle manager. They won't address the real issue because it would imply that they had made a mistake in promoting an incompetent person to middle management. This is the exact situation I find myself in. My boss has worked at this company for 25 years, and the last three he became manager of our design team. His technical skills are great, but he has absolutely no people skills, or even a sense of empathy. He has lost four of his nine designers, since he became the team manager. Does upper management seem to care? No. Does he realize that he might be the issue, and is attempting to change his ways? No. Let me tell you a secret. Coffee, it's just bean soup. Tea is just hot leaf juice. Adults don't have all the answers, and when you're an adult people look to you for answers. The problem though, is that some adults do think they have all the answers. 
You're not the main character, and sometime you're not as important as you think you are. I prefer to look at it in a different way. You are the protagonist in your story, but everyone else also has a story, where they are the protagonist. I'm pretty sure I'm just the comic relief in someone's story, and most of my scenes got cut this season. Some people are dumb or don't want to study. Putting them in the same class as smart people who do want to study, is like putting a zombie infected in a room full of healthy people. This is why we need ability based classes, where I went to high school, we had 4 classes, 1 for dumb kids, 2 for average kids, and 1 for gifted, of course, they weren't labeled obviously, but as an example of differences, in history, the smart class wrote a 3000 word essay, the average classes wrote a 1000 word essay and the dumb class wrote a 500 word response. I know some people will criticize that, but it worked kids in the dumb class weren't university bound, so they just didn't need all the extra stuff anyhow, many of them still went on to get jobs or complete vocational training. Many of the kids in the smart class have advanced degrees. We can hope that karma is real in the greater scheme of things, but, in my experience, waiting for people to get what's coming to them is pointless. I've known shitty people, that have taken shortcuts, cheated, etc. And they've made out just fine. I've also known people, that have done everything, right and behaved honorably, and gotten absolutely screwed, 